What's up with that? My Wi-Fi is not detected. It doesn't show up. I thought Linux was supposed to work on everything. Hello again, everyone. In today's video, I'm finally going to address the elephant in the room, the most asked question when it comes to switching to Linux. Why doesn't my Wi-Fi work? In this video, what I'm going to do is attempt to make it very simple for you to understand what the problem is and also what you can do about it. Now, to be fair, it's often the case that Wi-Fi will work out of the box and there's nothing that you have to do in Linux. It'll just, well, work. But if it's working for you, then you probably didn't click on this video. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to let you guys know why Wi-Fi is sometimes a problem and also how to fix it. If Wi-Fi doesn't work with your chosen Linux distribution and then you go on Google and try to find a solution, you might find all kinds of different ways to fix the problem. And some of those might even include something called NDIS wrapper or possibly even compiling a driver from source. Now, I'm not going to have you guys do those things in this video. While they are valid fixes, I do feel they're often a little overkill for this problem. What I intend to do is to make it super simple for you to understand why it's a problem in the first place and also what you can do about it. So before we get into how to fix the problem and also why the problem is happening in the first place, let's first make sure that you actually have the problem that we're trying to fix in this video. So what you see on the screen right now is a screen recording from an actual Linux installation. And what I'm going to do right now is attempt to connect to a Wi-Fi network. And on this particular distribution to connect to Wi-Fi, what you generally do is you move the mouse cursor up here to the top right corner of the screen, you click on it. And then here in this list, you should see an option to connect to Wi-Fi, but I don't. There's no option for Wi-Fi here whatsoever. Not only do I not see any Wi-Fi networks, I don't even see the option to connect to one. So if you don't see a Wi-Fi adapter here at all where you would normally see one, then that's your indicator that you are dealing with the problem that we're trying to solve in this video. Okay, so you have the problem. You see no Wi-Fi networks and you are sure that you should see some Wi-Fi networks because you have Wi-Fi in your area. What can you actually do about this problem? Well, like I mentioned, I'm going to let you guys know why you're having this problem. And then later in the video, I'll give you my solutions to fix this problem. But before I get into any of that, there's one super easy fix that I recommend you try first. Now, to be fair, it's not very likely that this is your problem but it's so easy that I recommend that you check this first. And it might sound elementary to a lot of you guys out there, but take a look at your device, for example, your laptop, and check and see if you have a switch that toggles Wi-Fi on or off. And on the laptop that you're seeing on the screen right now, it's very easy to accidentally turn your Wi-Fi off when you put this laptop into a bag. If the zipper, for example, catches the Wi-Fi button and disables it, it happens a lot. But a lot of laptops and notebooks, they don't actually have a physical toggle switch like this one has. Quite a few of them actually have an F key that has a Wi-Fi on-off switch on it that you typically access by holding function and pressing that key. Just go ahead and try to turn your Wi-Fi on. I know that sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised how often that happens. Now, if I still have your attention, that probably means that your issue wasn't as simple as turning on your Wi-Fi via some sort of physical button. So what I'm going to do in the next section is give you some information about why this is a problem, and then we'll get into my solutions. So in this section, what I'm going to do is talk to you guys about why this is even a problem in the first place. Does Linux suck? Is it just not as good as your friend or coworker told you it was? What's the actual problem here? Well, there's actually more than one reason why this happens. Sometimes your distribution just doesn't do a good job in enabling wireless, and you might need to try a different distribution, but often it has to do with what's called proprietary drivers. Now, Linux is open source. That means that developers, if they notice a problem or a bug is reported, they could go in and fix the problem. If there's an open source driver for your wireless card, and there's some sort of issue, then, well, the developers, they can fix it. But most of the time, Wi-Fi cards are proprietary. That means that there's not an open source driver available. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use that Wi-Fi card, the Wi-Fi card that's in your computer, but it might mean that you have some additional hoops to jump through so that you can use it. Now, to be fair, I totally understand. You have Wi-Fi in your computer, 
You really don't care about proprietary software or the politics around that. You just want it to work. Well, we'll get to that later, but it is what it is. Some distributions handle this differently than others. Now, one example of this is Debian. Debian really doesn't like to include proprietary drivers, and they often won't. So if your Wi-Fi card requires proprietary firmware in order to function, then most likely it will not work in Debian. At least not until we make it work. More on that later. Distributions such as Ubuntu, they often do include proprietary drivers when necessary. Now, don't get me wrong. No one likes proprietary drivers. They are a bane when it comes to the Linux community, but it is what it is. You have Wi-Fi and you want it to work. Ubuntu understands that. They do a better job than Debian when it comes to facilitating wireless on your computer. Now, at this point, it's pretty easy to get upset with your distribution and why they don't actually facilitate your Wi-Fi card. But the situation is a no-win situation for everyone. The distributions, they don't like this situation. The users, they don't like this situation. Nobody likes the situation around wireless and Linux. I mean, think about it this way. If the driver was open source, then the maintainers of your distribution, they could fix a problem if there was one. But if there is no open source driver available, no open source firmware, then your distribution, well, they look at this a little bit differently. They see this as a problem that could affect or impact in some way the stability of your installation. If they don't know how it works and they can't fix problems, they can't see the source code, then the developers of a Linux distribution, what they can't do is make sure that your experience is great because there's nothing that they can do to really implement that driver in a way that's going to be effective for, well, pretty much everybody. So they leave it up to you, the user, to figure it out. Well, thankfully you have me, so I'm going to help you guys out and get this fixed. But anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know why it's a problem. And in the next section, we're going to go over some possible solutions that you might want to consider. All right, so your computer has a Wi-Fi card and it's not supported for whatever reason. You don't see any Wi-Fi networks. What can you do about it? In this section, I'm going to go over several different things that you can try to get your Wi-Fi card working. Now, the first thing that I recommend you try is to try a different distribution. Now, I'm not telling you that you should switch away from your favorite distribution, but trying a different distribution in live mode will at least tell you if another distribution handles Wi-Fi on your system better than the one that you're currently using. Now, Debian, for example, is notorious for Wi-Fi not working. So I'm pretty sure a certain subset of people watching this video, you're probably running Debian. More on that later. But when it all comes down to it, though, just try a different distribution. For example, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a great one to try. And depending on how you feel about Ubuntu, I'm not telling you to switch to Ubuntu, but if you download it and then create boot media and boot from that boot media and select the try Ubuntu mode, then what that'll allow you to do is see whether or not Wi-Fi works on Ubuntu. If it does, then what that tells you is that Wi-Fi is supported when it comes to Linux for your hardware, but the distribution that you were trying first just didn't do a good job in setting that up. And sometimes it's not even about that. If you're using an older distribution, it could be a distribution that nowadays supports your Wi-Fi card, but if it's an older release, it might just be too old to actually utilize Wi-Fi on your system. But by trying a different distribution, you can at least narrow the problem down. Now, if you don't mind switching to another distribution, then, well, maybe this actually solved your problem. If you don't mind using Ubuntu or whatever distribution you tried where Wi-Fi is working, then you're all set. Wi-Fi works, you're good, and congratulations, everything is now fine. But assuming that you don't want to choose a different distribution or this didn't solve your problem, let's go ahead and continue. Now, I want to take a moment and talk about Debian for a moment because, again, I'm sure a certain subset of viewers of this video are running Debian. If you are running Debian, well, what can you do about it? Well, actually, there's a special firmware package that you can install that will enable you to use Wi-Fi on Debian in situations where you weren't able to do that before. Now, you can install this package manually by reaching for a network cable and just downloading it via wired Ethernet. That often works just fine but that's kind of complicated to explain in one video. So what I'm going to do instead is recommend an alternate version of Debian that not many people know exists. There's actually a secret or hidden version of Debian, believe it or not, that does include the Wi-Fi drivers that Debian normally doesn't include. This special version of Debian is known as the non-free edition. 
Non-free means that it includes software that isn't free software. Debian doesn't like to do this, but they do make this available for those that need it. They just don't do a good job in advertising it, so I'm sure many of you might not even be aware that this exists. So what you could do is download the live edition, for example, of one of the non-free versions of Debian and see whether or not Wi-Fi is detected. If it is, then you probably need to use that version of Debian as the easiest way to get you going. Now, there's nothing on the non-free edition that you can't get yourself. It's just that it's built in. It's a lot easier. But if you want a challenge, there's actually an article that I will link you to in the description down below. And what that'll help you do is get Wi-Fi working on your current Debian installation without having to, you know, pave and reload. It'll help you get it working on your current installation. Now, Debian aside, what can you do to actually fix this problem the right way? Well, if you look online, if your Wi-Fi card is not easily supported, you'll probably find that there's articles on compiling a driver from source or maybe even using Endis wrapper. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure the people that wrote these articles and how-tos, they meant well, and well, those are valid fixes. If those fixes work for you, then great. But the reason why I don't like all these hacky solutions to Wi-Fi is because while it might fix your problem right now, your problem will most likely come back. I mean, if you ever have to reinstall your distribution again in the future, are you going to remember exactly what you did to get your Wi-Fi working? Unless you take really good notes, Probably not. So rather than have you guys go through the process of tweaking Endis wrapper or compiling a driver from source, what I'm going to do instead is give you an even easier method to get Wi-Fi working. And the cool thing about this method is that this method will actually survive distribution reinstalls. So that way you won't have to do this ever again. So are you ready? You wanna know my big secret in getting Wi-Fi working on Linux when it doesn't normally? Drum roll, please. Replace the Wi-Fi card. Now, I'm not really sure why this isn't more common online because it literally is the easiest way to fix the problem. Now, don't get me wrong. Some laptops, for example, are hard to open or disassemble, but most of them actually do make it easy to get to your Wi-Fi card. Now, the cool thing about this is that a replacement Wi-Fi card, one that actually works, is going to be dirt cheap. I mean, literally, like 10 or 15 US dollars, they don't cost that much. In fact, the last time I ordered one from eBay, I got three of them in the package. They're practically giving these things away. I don't know why, but they just don't have a lot of value in aftermarket. So for 10 or $11, you can actually get a supported Wi-Fi card and replace the Wi-Fi card inside your computer with one that's actually supported. Now, where you have to be careful here though, is that some computers, some manufacturers will actually lock your computer if you attempt to replace the Wi-Fi card. I've seen this happen with some models of HP laptops and also some models of Lenovo laptops. What'll happen is that you replace the Wi-Fi card with a supported Wi-Fi card, and then from that point on, your computer will never boot again because, well, you have an unsupported Wi-Fi card that the vendor didn't bless. They don't want you using your computer anymore. That's horrible. Now, thankfully, to fix that problem, you could just put the Wi-Fi card back in your computer that came with it normally, and then it'll boot just fine, but then your Wi-Fi still won't work. I have a solution for this as well that I'll get to later in the video. But assuming that you don't have a computer that locks up when you go to replace the Wi-Fi card, then what you have is a supported Wi-Fi card that actually works, survives reboots, and you'll never have to mess with this again. It's inexpensive. And even though it only takes 10 or 15 minutes or so to replace a Wi-Fi card in most computers, it might sound like a lot of work, but in my opinion, it's actually a lot easier than compiling a driver from source every time you reinstall or some other wonky hack that you have to use to get your Wi-Fi working. By using a supported Wi-Fi card, you're going to have a much easier time overall. So the moral of the story, Replace your Wi-Fi card, done. No tweaks, no Endis wrapper, none of that, you're good. Now the thing is, if you're using Debian and you replace your Wi-Fi card, chances are it still won't work, unless you're using the non-free version of Debian that I mentioned earlier, because even though a Wi-Fi card might be supported out of the box, 
it still might be using some kind of proprietary driver in some distributions. They really don't want to, you know, facilitate that. But you can solve that problem pretty quickly by just using the non-free version of Debian, and then you should be good to go with the Wi-Fi card that you put into your computer. So which Wi-Fi card should you buy? I recommend Intel Wi-Fi cards because from my experience, they're the most supported. So if you get a Wi-Fi card aftermarket from eBay, a PCIe card that you put inside your computer, then chances are that's going to work out just fine. Ubuntu, for example, supports that out of the box. Fedora, last I checked, they support that out of the box. All the distributions, except for Debian, because Debian always has to be the edge case, support Intel Wi-Fi cards out of the box. And even Debian supports them out of the box as well. If you use the non-free version of Debian, then you won't have that problem after you replace your Wi-Fi card with an Intel card. And that's actually what I do on my end. What I'll do is I'll replace a Wi-Fi card on any machine that comes into the studio that doesn't ship with an Intel card because Intel cards, even though yes, they are still proprietary, they seem to work the best. So I'll pull out the card that's in there and I'll replace it with an Intel card and I'm good to go. But what do I do with all the cards that I pull out of all these computers when I replace the Wi-Fi cards? Well, actually I have a very, very, very special place for these Wi-Fi cards. I literally throw them in the trash. That's exactly what I think about these Wi-Fi cards. I don't want to spend time getting these Wi-Fi cards to work. I just want these Wi-Fi cards out of my life and into the trash. Now, to be fair, you can't really do this if your computer is under warranty, because if you have to send it in for a warranty claim, then you'll definitely want to make sure that you put the Wi-Fi card back into the computer that came with it. Otherwise, your manufacturer might have some warranty questions for you. So I mentioned a few times in this video to simply replace your Wi-Fi card. But what do you do if your laptop is just way too complicated to break open, or you have one of those computers that will actually lock and not boot if the BIOS detects an unwelcome Wi-Fi card? What do you do in that case? In that case, well, changing the Wi-Fi card is simply not an option. But there is another option that you might want to consider, a USB Wi-Fi card. Now I get it, it's not the preferred fix, you probably don't want something sticking out of your computer, but these actually work. Now, to be fair, some of these Wi-Fi cards that plug in via USB will also need proprietary software and might even need you to mess with NDIS wrapper or manually compile a driver. It happens. But there's actually USB Wi-Fi cards that work out of the box in Linux, and it might be a great solution if replacing the Wi-Fi card inside your computer is not possible or is just too complicated. And specifically, what I'm going to recommend is a special Wi-Fi card from Think Penguin. This Wi-Fi card is really cool because it doesn't need any proprietary software at all. It just works out of the box. You plug it in, you're done, period. No reboot, nothing to do, plug it in, you have Wi-Fi, you're all set. And they're relatively inexpensive. So what I'm going to do right now is show you a fresh Debian installation that has no Wi-Fi whatsoever. Well, actually, it does, but Debian wants nothing to do with it. And then what I'll do is plug in the Think Penguin adapter, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So here I am with my ThinkPad X1 Extreme. It's a pretty cool laptop. This particular computer has an Intel Wi-Fi card inside, which means for the majority of Linux distributions, the Wi-Fi card works just fine out of the box. But unfortunately, Debian, Debian Stable specifically, is installed on this computer, and not the non-free edition. I'm actually using the standard version of Debian Stable, the one that doesn't include the non-free firmware, and unfortunately, Wi-Fi doesn't work. As you can see right here, when I go over to the upper right-hand corner, I see no Wi-Fi networks at all. But thankfully, right here, I have my USB Wi-Fi adapter from Think Penguin that actually alleges to work out of the box with no proprietary software being necessary. So what I'm going to do is insert it into the computer. And check this out. I have Wi-Fi networks listed right here. I didn't reboot. I didn't need to install anything at all. And again, I'm running Debian stable. And as you can see, my Wi-Fi networks magically appeared. Now, the moral of the story is that you can get pretty much any Wi-Fi adapter to work on Linux with a little bit of elbow grease by manually compiling a driver 
using Endis wrapper or something like that. But I don't recommend you do any of those things. Instead, replace your Wi-Fi card. And if your Wi-Fi card can't be replaced for whatever reason, use a USB Wi-Fi card from a company such as Think Penguin. And there you go, your problems are now solved. So hopefully this video was helpful in letting you guys know why Wi-Fi is such a problem in Linux, as well as some of the things that you can actually do about it. Let me know in the comments down below if this video has helped you out. And if it has, please click that like button because that lets YouTube know that other people might benefit from my solutions as well. I would really appreciate that. And subscribe if you haven't already done so because I have some more awesome content coming very soon. So stay tuned.